Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. The next verse says, Nor let us act immorally as some of them did. And when they did act immorally... This is in Numbers 21 to 20. Ch- ch- start, start around chapter tw- 20 and go to 25. You'll read the story of this guy named Balaam, a prophet who was hired by a king named Balak to curse the Israelites. And I'll, I'll do that one in detail later, but this prophet, he's, he's going after greed because the king is promising him. And... The king, king says, just come curse him because we know whoever you curse is cursed and whoever you bless is blessed. But you guys know the story, right? He gets there, he says, make an altar, give a sacrifice. And then instead of pronouncing a curse against the Israelites, what's he do? He blesses them. And finally, after three times of doing this, the king goes, I'm trying to pay you to curse him and you keep blessing him. He goes, it just won't work. But he says, but I'll tell you what you can do. Because he doesn't want to lose his pay. And so he teaches them how to ensnare the Israelites. He says, send your girls in. And, and, and you know, they've been slaves for a long time. Have them dress, you know, kind of in their nice seductive outfits. And, and, and have them invite the boys to come to one of their parties with their style of you know, partying, with their worship to their false god and have the boys join in. And then their god, the god, will be mad at them. And you can't curse them, but if you could just ensnare them, you could trip them up, then God will do the job. Did it work? Numbers 25, it says that the, that the sons of, of Israel went down to join the daughters of Moab. And they joined in in their false, their false worships of, of, of the Moabitess uh, deities. And God slew 23,000 of the Israelites. Because they, that, this wasn't just a couple boys went down to the party. 23,000 will die. Now, every time that there's a little, one thing I figured out from learning these stories in details, every sin, whatever it was, that they got sucked into. If it's craving meat or worshiping golden calves or going after cute women, in the end, it costs lives. The wages of sin is what? Death. Now, we gotta, we got to go, does, does sin really bring death in our lives? Like if you tell a lie, you know, Bible, that's one of the Ten Commandments, do not lie, right? Don't bear false witness against your name. If you tell a lie, it, it won't really hurt anything, right? Husbands and wives, can you bear witness if, if the spouse starts lying to you? How, how, does this, how does this improve your relationship? Really builds it strong, right? And you're like, wait a minute, they're lying to me about this. And if they lie to me about this, then what about that? You know, and then pretty soon your, your wheels are turning. Can I trust them about anything? And it's one of the things that we have to be careful that that the scripture tells us it, whatever sin it is, there's a consequence. In this in this lusting thing, whether it was after gold or it was after flesh or it was after meat, each one of these examples cost Israel lives. Now you can step back and go, well, who cares? Or you can say, you know, I think I'd rather learn from them doing the mistake. Is anyone here like me allergic to pain? You'd rather just learn from someone else doing the mistake than do it yourself? Like, if, if it's allowed, you know, and you, and you have an ear to hear that day, and you see somebody do something and you think, note to self, <laughs> that doesn't work. Does anyone here do that, by the way? When you're going through life's journey, you, you, you see someone making a mistake and you're like, Put that down in my notes. Don't do that. That just backfired on his, you know, that, that, that guy thought he was getting away with fooling around and he was, 
he was telling her, oh, I'm not doing it. And then he was telling her, I'm not doing it. And then they became friends. Right? And they both found out they were both being lied to. So now he isn't friends with either one. The whole thing blew, right? This is the wages of sin, is death. It will kill your relationships. It will destroy you. And this, this happened to Israel. These very sins. There's not, how many temptations were new? Where is this going? There's none. It's all the same old, same old. Let me just show you the last one that Paul, he, he refers to a, a, a few more Old Testament stories that I'll go, I'll go in detail next time. But he says, nor let us try the Lord as some of them did. And they were destroyed by service. Do you remember when Israel tried God and God sent in serpents because they were, they, they were mad at you might not know this story, but I'll, I'll do this one too. This is Numbers 21. The people, um, why does Moses get to be in charge? We don't like that he's in charge. And God says, you know, they were complaining and grumbling against God. Now, did, did Moses really want this job anyway? I mean, I always l look at this. If you read the scripture, he wasn't like going, send me, I'll go. Right? The dude didn't even want the job. But God says, I'm going to use you anyway. I put you here as an instrument, and I'm going to use you. And he's like, all right. He even tried to get out of it. Do you guys remember the story? He actually didn't really like say, let's just do this thing. I mean, he's a great lesson in leadership. He, doesn't, he didn't even want to be the glory hog of having God's spirit. He wanted God's spirit to be on all the people. But, when he gets chosen by God, there's always going to be someone. Whenever one person is chosen by God to do something, there's always some fellow who goes, well, how come you didn't choose me? Little jealousy comes in. You know, or I could do it better. I have this all the time. People tell me, Pastor, you don't know what you're doing. I'm like, yeah, amen to that. And they're, they're like, I should be the pastor here. You've got some screwed up people here. And they need, to, they need to be set straight. And I could tell them what to do. And you, you're terrible at your job. You don't even tell them what to do. You tell them to listen to the Lord, and the Lord will tell them what to do. I thought that was the right approach. But, you know, there are people who have told me, you, you know, I, I could do this job much better. I'm, I'm thinking inside, you probably could. They didn't really choose the job or the calling the calling chose me. And who was calling? The Lord. Paul, even Paul had to constantly defend all of his epistles open with, Paul, an apostle, called by the church of Jerusalem and the board of elders at, d does he say that? No, he says, Paul, an apostle, called by the will of God. God picked me for this job. And he, he, he didn't even want to do it sometimes. But it was God that called him. It's funny how when God calls the guys, you get guys like Jonah. They run the other way. God's going, You're, I'm sending you. No way. I'm out of here. You know? And, and, and this is actually a good leadership lesson because sometimes in the Lord's choosing, he'll pick a guy and, and, and the guy's not really going, I want to do that. And the guy goes, yeah, but that'll just show that it's me, not you. Watch what I'll do through you. And... And he chooses these guys, and he chose Moses. And the people are like, well, why does Moses get to be in charge? We don't like that God made a choice, and it wasn't us. Me, me, me. Complain, complain. God goes, Moses, let me wipe them out. <laughs> we'll start over with you. Moses, no, Lord, no. He goes, all right, I'll fix this. And the Lord, it says, sent in vipers, these poisonous snakes that bit the complainers. Only the complainers. I love this. The snakes knew which ones were complaining. <laughs> wee, wee, wee. What was that? <laughs> and they get bit. And the thing is, these snakes were super poisonous. Like the, the, they, the, I read about the, the neurotoxin that, that they possess. It actually gets in the bloodstream and the person only has a couple minutes of voluntary muscle control. 
because it starts to, first it starts with the voluntary muscles you're moving of your arms your head your neck all that and it starts shutting it down and it, and once <laughs> once it all shuts down you fall down on the ground laying there and then it works its way to the involuntary you know the heart the circulatory system and it shuts that down and you die and the lord the lord the lord goes moses i'm going to fix this for you <laughs> you go take some bronze and make it into a bronze serpent and put it up on your on your standard on your staff and tell the people if you get bit by a snake all you have to do is what you guys know this story right you just look at the bronze serpent that's on Moses' staff. Now, I love this story. This is, this is how you get anti-venom for a snake bite, a poisonous snake bite, with no needles. I hate needles. So I'm thinking, this is awesome. All you have to do, if you get bit by this snake, is look where? At the staff in whose hand? Moses'. But I don't like Moses. I was just complaining about who made him the leader. Why should we have to look at him? And God goes, let me fix this for you, Moses. I'm going to give you the staff, and if they want to live, who do they got to look at? At the staff that you're holding. The very guy that they were complaining about gets the stick. With the bronze serpent. And by the way, do you know that that... that Symbol is what we have on the side of an ambulance today. You ever wonder why they have snakes on a staff on an ambulance? It's from the story in the Bible. Comes from it was a sign of healing. From a poison that is deadly, you could be cured just by looking. And Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And just like the poison that that snake delivered that killed them physically, you, we've all been bitten by the poison of sin. And there's only one person to look to, and that's Jesus, who was lifted up on the cross. And people get mad at me. Well, I don't like that. He's the guy I have to look at. Look, I didn't make the rules. I'm just telling you where to look. You get bit by this, this deadly poison of sin, it's going to kill you. All these examples show the wages of sin is death. There is a provision of life, though, in Jesus. And all you have to do is look at him. Anti-venom is distributed. You get saved from death by what he did on the... So, so you are saying that any time when we see a serpent on the, on the ambulance, we should cancel an appointment with the doctor? Yeah. <laughs> you could what? Yeah. Cancel an appointment with, all with the doctor. <laughs> if you got the faith, brother. <laughs> but, but that very symbol was put on the ambulance because of the story that that was a sign of healing. And it's a really, I trained as an EMT when I was younger because I wanted to be the backwoods ranger in the Grand Canyon National Park, and so it was a part of the requirement. And they actually taught us in the EMT courses that, you know, that what that symbol, where it came from. And I'm thinking, I already know the Bible story, but the guy telling it wasn't a, wasn't a believer. But he's like, this is a special symbol. And he says, and whether you realize it or not, even ambulance EMT trained folks the, the, the nursing profession, they know that when, when a person is in distress, they've been hit on the, in an accident on the side of the road, and the sirens and the, and the ambulance starts coming, as soon as they see the ambulance, now I've been there with somebody that's been hit, and their heart is racing, pounding, they're all panicking. As soon as the ambulance, they see it, there's something interesting happens. What happens to their biofeedback? They start to relax. Help is on the way. They start to, they're like, so good. How I, I, you know, like, like I've stayed alive long enough. Now the guys are here to, f to, to save me, you know. And, and, they, and they literally, if you, if you got your finger on their pulse, it actually starts to, re to, to slow down. They start to, and they stop panicking as much. And, and the, my ENT instructor is going, these people know that this is a sign. Of, they, they might not know the story, but this is, has some kind of super, to him, he's just like, there's something supernatural about, this, this thing what we do to help people. And he was n not one of those religious yogi kind of guys. He was just saying, there's something to this. I don't get it. And I was like, man, I do. I read the Bible. This is a really good story. Because the people who looked, they got bit. And the, if they would look at Moses 
and that serpent, what would happen? They live. What if they went? You know, I really don't like that guy. I'm not gonna. You know, I don't care if God chose him. Should have chose me. I ain't looking. Okay, don't look. Plunk. I mean, <laughs> God goes, I'll take care of it for you, Moses. You know, sometimes we, we lust after someone else's position in life. Whatever their position is. They might be a leader in some group. Might be a leader at your job. They might just have something that you want. But Paul says, don't let us try the Lord as they did. And some of them were destroyed. Does anyone know how many died? On this, on this one, the serpents, we, we, um, we know that, in no, well, it doesn't tell us how many died. It just tells us that many died. Many. Because they just, and they didn't have to. That's what kills me. The provision to live was there. They just died because they didn't want to look to God's provision. Then the verse, one more verse left to cover, guys. I'll just quickly do it. It says, nor let us grumble. Oh, we would never grumble. We could just skip this one, right? As some of them did, and they were destroyed by the destroyer. You remember in Numbers 16, Korah. One of the priests grumbles, how come Moses and Aaron, Aaron gets to be God's choice of high priest. Lord tells Moses, just tell them to show up tomorrow with their fire pans, their incense offering. And, and the one I accept their offering from, that's the one is my choice. The ones I don't accept, well, you'll know what happens to them. Now, I'll save that story. That one's a juicy one, okay? Cause, but just to let you know, that day it will cost those 250. Uh, Korah won't go by himself. He will get 250 other priests to join him. 250 other leaders in the spiritual circle will join Korah in his rebellion. How many of them are going to make it through that day when they give the fire pan offering? You guys know the story, right? What happened? The earth, opens. the earth opens and swallows them alive. And the fire pans, the fire pans get beaten into bronze plating and put on the altar of the Lord as a reminder that God gets to choose who he wants for his priests. Don't complain about it. The sad part is the next day the people grumble and 14,700 more of them die. I mean, I'll show you if you want. In the, you, you can read it, number 16, 17. Just peruse through there. You'll see the... To me, I look at this and I think, it says this happened to them for their example. A lot of people died in these... Just this five verses I just covered. You, you got, you know, a bunch of people dying here from the manna, the graves of greediness. You got, you, you got 3,000 dying from, from fooling around with the golden calf. You get, you get all 20, 23,000 falling in one day from the immorality thing. You get 14,700 plus the 250 priests plus Korah. I mean, sum this up. There's a lot of guys died in Israel because of the wrong motives that they had. Because they craved evil things. Now, whose example did this happen for? Ours. You know, sometimes we need like a wake-up call. Sometimes we have to, we don't actually think there's a real danger unless, it's kind of like living here in Hawaii. After being here for 25 years, I, I'm going to give you, you ones visiting, just a little tip. If you happen to be going down to the volcano to see it, and, and along the road there's a curve, uh, you know, a, a sign that says curves ahead, danger, slow down. And they actually post a... Um, a speed limit sign that says slow down, danger ahead. I want to submit to you that you really slow down. And the reason is because, and I could get in trouble for saying this, but Hawaii road workers are kind of lazy. I can only say that because I've been here over uh, uh, 25 years, so just so you know, I'm speaking from 
observation. They don't put one of those signs that says danger around this bend until two or three people died. They're like, one person died, I uh, still don't need no sign. Just one accident. Two people dies on it. Oh, well, you know, maybe they'll be thinking about it. Three, four, five, five people died. We better put a sign up. We don't have any speed limit signs going down south except for the places where people, have, multiple people have died already on those curves. That's why I tell my friends when they come here. You know, I know you like to, to maybe lead foot it a little. You're not from here. You haven't got the aloha, chill, look at the scenery kind of drive kind yet. But, but in your hurry, if you should see one of those signs that says slow down, this curve ahead is dangerous. Trust me, it's really dangerous. People already died to get the sign there. Now, when I tell them that, they're like, oh, good to know. I, I'll pay attention when I'm driving. I'm here to teach you something even more important about driving through the course of this life. That many people have died, many, many people have died because they craved evil things. And those people, we're not talking just three, five people died on that curve. We're talking tens of thousands died from these curves and God's going I have a warning it's like he's given us the road sign that says watch out danger ahead so are you one of the people that says hey good to know note to self you know some of you are very instructable you you hear this and your ear is open and you go that's a good thing to pay attention I'll, 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 I'll try to remember that but there are some people just like the Israelites like you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> you ever run into those guys? You, 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 you can't tell me anything, Pastor. I know it all. And what I don't know, I'll find out anyway. Not from you. School of Hard Knocks, it's called. Have fun knocking. I mean, get knocked. I'm pretty sure that's what it means, right? You get knocked. Good luck. And I'm here to tell you, you don't have to go the hard knock way if your ear is just open. And you can go, hey, that sounds like a good thing to learn from. I better learn from their example. Because these things that verse 11 says were written for our example. For those it says that for our instruction upon whom the end of the ages have come. Are we, are we getting to the end of the ages, you think? then this is written for us. Therefore, verse 12, let him, who th let him who thinks he stands take heed that he does not fall. Take caution. Learn, learn from the sign. Caution. It, it, be careful. You think, well, I can be greedy. It won't cost me nothing. Or I can lust. It's not going to be a problem. I can... I can fool around and go after money and gold just just what, what's the problem with worshiping money? jesus said you cannot worship god and mammon riches you you'll either hate one and cling to the other or vice versa you, it, it's a mutually exclusive thing now you can seek god and he'll add money to you but you can't seek money and say yeah i'm going to seek money and god they're, they're just, it, it's an idol it's two different and i've known men that their whole lives were all about the money and not about their maker. You ever m run into folks like that? That everything is, how much money do you make? How much, what do you do? And everything is measured by how much do you have? And as if life is measured by that. When You know, when we go to heaven, none of that's going to matter because you can't take it with you. Serve God. Next week, I'm going to go back over a couple of the stories because they're really juicy. In numbers and, uh, if you want to read, if you got a little spare time, just read, like, say, from Numbers 11 to 20, 20 actually to 25 would be the best. That's this, I'm giving you a lot, 14 chapters. If you don't have time for all of them, do 21 to 25. And I would like to show you some really juicy stuff. And then there's some stuff in Exodus that I'll show you. And these stories might help. Uh, I'll show you the actual, like, nuances, the little stuff in the story. 
and then maybe it'll like helps you know some of us like to know the gritty details and then then the story becomes like real and then we get them then we can go oh yeah i know it's kind of like knowing one person who died on that curve you know the details you knew the family you know how it impacted them and now that sign on the road really means something to you that's what i'd like to do with these verses next week is make these stories come alive where you go oh that really means something to, that really speaks to me you, you'll spot things in the story that You'll go, oh, yeah, that, I, 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 I share that same thing, or, or I identify with that, you know, and you'll, it'll help you, it'll bring it more into that spiritual reality that helps you, it helps you to avoid these temptations. And that's what I want for all of you. I want you all to be able to, 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 to know how to take the way of escape when God provides it. Because is God faithful to provide the way of escape? He will be faithful. Uh, every temptation you face this week, I guarantee you can even stop in the middle of the temptation and go, God, where's the way of escape? Pastor said you, you're faithful. You always will provide one. And you just watch. I, I'm not saying take it on my word. Take it on his word. He will provide. My question is, are you going to take it? And next week I'll give you a lot of good reasons to take it. Hopefully, some re-encouraging things to build your faith. Let's pray. Father, thanks so much for this time. Thanks that we get to have your word in our laps and we get to have wallpaper with whales and canoes and boats going by and waves. Lord, you're so kind to just give us such a sweet place to meet. I just pray as we go from here, these words, they could, they could be buried into our spirits where they need to be. For Lord, for those occasions when, when, the, when the trial or the temptation would arise, you would bring these things back to our remembrance so we could, we could use them and overcome. Help us all become overcomers by your Son, Christ who strengthens us. I ask that in, in his precious name. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone that agree with me said, Amen. Amen. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.